Today I'm going to build an industrial pipe shelving unit to hold my Little League participation trophies. Here's what you need. What we've got from top to bottom are six three quarter inch split rings, followed by two three quarter inch 90 degree black elbows, two three quarter inch black nipples at three and a half inches in length. Yes. They're called nipples, and no, I don't know why, but you should probably relax. Finally, we have four three-quarter inch black four flanges and two three-quarter inch black pipes at 60 inches each. This is all pre-made stuff. You can get it cut down to your knees and thread it. That's important. Um, if they're not threaded, you're not going to be able to screw them into each other. I'm going to measure these out to 48 inches each. Uh, so mark on each end. And then bring it to the saw. We're going to need a compound miter saw, table saw, circular saw, hand saw. Um, you're going to need some sort of saw, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Come on, baby. <laughs> so the thing about building furniture in your garage, um, is that sometimes it looks like it's been built in your garage. And by that I mean it looks unfinished. So one way to mitigate that without a router is to use your sander on a 45 degree angle on all of the edges. So instead of your piece looking like it's made in the garage, it'll be like it's made in China. I'm using a 1 and 1 8 inch speedboard bit to make 1 and 1 8 inch holes. What you may not know about 3 quarter inch pipe is it's actually an inch in outside diameter. So we're going to need a little bit of give on this side. I'm getting quite a bit of tear out on the bottom of all the holes. I'm not a professional. I don't know how to fix that. I think that if I were to tape the bottom, maybe I wouldn't get that. But once again, I, I really don't know. Okay, so I've never used poly shades, stain, and polyurethane in one step. Um, but I have children, and uh, I don't have time. So, despite the fact that shortcuts always seem to take longer, I'm going to give this stuff a try. Probably wearing gloves when you're using this stuff. I usually do, but um, I forgot. Uh, it seems to be going on nicely. A common mistake when staining is putting it on too thick, and especially since this is a stain in polyurethane in one, you really want to go nice and thin, and that's exactly what I did. And it seems to be working out pretty well. Right now, I'm measuring 15 inches from bottom of each pipe and that is where I'm going to secure the top of my split rings. Make sure you screw the floor flange on tightly. You know, you're going to have to man up a little bit. You may not know this but the pipe is very expensive and the fittings are as well so while I wouldn't build these shelves for you know 
somewhere that you're gonna hold a lot of weight. But if they're just medium to light duty shelves, uh, split rings work just fine. But you do need them on the top and the bottom. So make sure if you were to do this exact build, you'd buy 12 split rings. They're about a buck sixty, a dollar sixty a piece. This is all entirely up to you. The cool thing about using split rings is that not only are they cheap, but you can put them anywhere you want. It's really an opportunity to exercise your adult freedoms when it comes to shelves, which many people would probably admit that that aspect of their life is underdeveloped at this point. cats behind me. Very cute. Every time I'm out at the store with my oldest daughter, I buy her stuffed cat. This way so that when she's old enough and she wants an animal, it won't be a cat because she will literally have like a hundred stuffed cats. She'll be so sick of cats because her dad's been buying them uh, for her since she's been one. Right now there's like six here. And there's probably like six upstairs. So I'm in it for the long haul.